My name is uh, Juan Bustos. I'm with Isabel. Um, we're here to talk about the Isabel project and, and to tell you what we have been doing. Uh, we presented it last year, and a lot of stuff happened since then. So let's talk about what this is all about. We're going to talk about what is Isabel, what we have been doing, the releases, the news, and also the, the future of the project, uh, what the dev team are working on, and the different aspects of it. It's all basically, it's an open source uh, unified communications uh, community uh, that came up with a solution after Elastics, a uh, very popular uh, unified communication solutions disappeared uh, two years ago. Uh, members of the community put, joined their efforts together and uh, came up with a plan. They organized and basically uh, came up with a solution to provide um, a future for those installations. You know that from one day to the other, the last project disappeared. So you didn't have any repos, you didn't have any updates. And actually when you tried to download Elastics from the web, you got something based on 3CX. So everybody was like, okay, what do we do now? Um, basically these people joined together and, and started working on, on something new, on a fork. This is uh, the premise for this project, it's open source free open source, you can go there, you can check the source code, uh, the SRPMs are available in the repos and everything. And of course, it also comes with new features. So on one hand, we have all the stuff needed to continue with the projects with everything that was ongoing. ongoing. And also you have now a new set of features um, that were available since we started. The community, a lot of people came from the Elastics community, a lot of reference, uh, including our CTO, Nicolas Budinho. He's the guy who developed the Flash Operator panel. And uh, he's leading all the development efforts. So we, the first step was to get the mirrors uh, and repos available. Uh, so if you had an Elastic server, if you have an Elastic server today and you run a YAM update, most likely it will die for two main reasons. The first one, it was based on CentOS 5. And CentOS 5, it's done. It's way long end of life. And also all the Elastics repos disappeared. So uh, if you had any server in production and you need to pull something, you, you wouldn't be able to, to get anything from that. Also, the idea is to give support to the community members and also the professionals and the businesses, providing a dot-com aspect of it that can provide uh, training and certification to continue all the certifications and training that were in Elastics. Elastics was pretty good, big and good in, in training. And there were a lot of uh, different certified professionals. So this was a way to keep them going and, and also to give them an alternative to continue with uh, their businesses. Also providing a hardware alternative if they wanted to support the project and also the, the certifications exams. And of course, official support that disappeared with the death of Elastics. So let's talk about um, a little bit in numbers. Last year, we presented these numbers. Uh, October last year, we were at 36,000 downloads. Today, we are at 117,000. So there was a lot of uh, downloads. We also have, uh, when you register your server, we get the number for that, and we computed, as for last week, 20,000 registered servers. Um, we have presence in 183 count countries. We have 2,800 community members and 3,700 newsletter subscribers. The title, of this, um, the title of this presentation was an established open source solution because uh, when everything started, we didn't know what will come out of this, how many people will adopt it, how many people will trust the project and trust the same community. And uh, a couple of years after, we are seeing the numbers growing and a lot of people adopting it. Um, this is the, from SourceForge, just for last week, the number of downloads. Actually, we are presenting with this asteroid a new stable release, so <clears throat> it will grow for sure, um, the number of installs. Last year, we also got the product of the month from SourceForge, which uh, it was an honor to, for, for all the community members. And uh, let's talk about what we have been doing. So when we started the project, as I told you, we had the idea of con continuity. So you are not left behind. Elastics died, but the solution and your customers were still installed. So in order to continue with the project and to help all those people that was left behind, we provided a, an early version of Isabel 
that we branded 2.5, which was based on Elastix 2.5. The problem with that version is that it was based on CentOS 5. CentOS 5 being long gone, uh, end of life, it was a problem uh, providing like the support packages and you had to like add the vault repos and it, it was complicated, over complicated for something that really didn't add any kind of value. So this year the resolution was to abandon the further developments on the 2.5 branch um, it's uh, still available for download, but it won't be supported and it won't, we won't be putting new um, packages or, or updates to it. Also, on this new release, we bumped the version for CentOS to 7.5, which was uh, one of the latest. I don't know which, which one is the latest, but this is on within the last three months. Uh, there are live repos. There, there, sorry, there are live repos. There, there are packages available. It's pretty stable, um, and also. One thing that the version we had last year, uh, this version supports uh, seven generation Intel uh, processors. So we have the capabilities to adopt new hardware and, uh, and better uh, options. Also with this new version, we introduced the ability of not only the capability of installing Asterisk 11 or 13, the main base of uh, Elastix was based on Asterisk 11. So we had to keep that for the support and, you know, for keeping everything that was installed. But we also introduced the capabilities of installing Asterisk 13. You can decide when you're installing the ISO, you can decide if you wanna install Asterisk 11 with the call center, or if you wanna install Asterisk 13. Asterisk 13 also has the ability of uh, swapping versions, but I will tell you about it a little bit later on. Also, we improved the net install script. And we noticed that, I mean, we know the trends. Everything is cloud-based right now. So there are many users that they decide to create a droplet somewhere and just install, a, <clears throat> install a, an Isabel there and run it, right? So we have a net install script that with two lines of code, you can install Isabel on a CentOS-based uh, virtual machine or droplet, wherever you want. And uh, we also improved it on the last versions. And this is what uh, I was talking about. We put together a new way of um, installing asterisks and, and also the dependencies on all the other components on the system. So if you have an asterisk 11 server running today and you wanna swap your version to asterisk 13 for any reason you want, you can do it through yum. You just remove the old asterisk, yum install asterisk 13, and it will be running without any problems, without any issues, it works, we tested it, and it's pretty good. Also, because, and this came because of the need of being on the cloud. Sometimes you have a different uh, version of the CentOS or the Linux uh, kernel. And as you know, the daddy drivers or the one pipe drivers, they require to be compiled against the kernel you're working. The KMS is a solution that lets you um, compile those drivers when you're installing it. So having the ability of having DKMS packages, if you have your daddy driver installed today, you update the Linux kernel, it will recompile again without giving you any troubles. This is great for also for if you're in the cloud, you don't know what kernel you're getting. Uh, having DKMS there capabilities helps you a lot in, in, in those um, aspects. And also, uh, this was a big thing, especially when we were moving all the installed base from Isabel 2.5 to Isabel 4, having the ability of moving the configurations from other solutions to the others, that's including Elastics. So you can just uh, upload the backup and restore it in your uh, Isabel without any problems. Again, the idea is to give continuity and now you have no excuses to move to the newer versions because there were a lot of situations where people was stuck with CentOS 5 and, and the old solutions. Well, Elastic is not there anymore. It won't get better. Um, now you have the ability to go to something newer that's more refined and that actually has a more uh, um, features. Also on this new version, uh, we updated the Let's Encrypt uh, script to work on CentOS 7.5. So there were some little things that, that were needed for it to work properly, and it's done. And this is one of the biggest things that the dev team has been working lately, which is to put together a RESTful API to manage everything on the, on the system, create extensions, trunks, and 
sky's the limit. This is a homegrown uh, API and it's an ongoing development and it's very promising. We're very excited about it. A little thing, system recordings, uh, you can now do it through the browser. Uh, some people have, you know, professionals uh, doing the recordings. Some people are lazy and you can do it on your web browser. It's pretty neat. Um, also, this is new too. Uh, we have a root congestion message model. It happens a lot that sometimes you have your users dialing a number without the right prefix and they get the operator saying that the number you have dialed is not in service or uh, the, the call cannot be dialed, uh, cannot be made as dialed. Well, with this uh, module, you can put um, specific messages for those cases. So this will save a couple of headaches, especially with the users. And I mean, we go with the logs, we check what's going on, it's done. But for the users, this is very, very helpful, especially in call centers. Also, we added the feature for queue continue destination option, which uh, lets you, once the call is done on the queue, you can do something. You can send, for example, the, the typical example of this, you have a, a calls in your queue and you want to send them to a survey after the call. So with this module, you just uh, set up a custom destination, select it, and there you go. When this, the call is ready, after the call is completed on the queue, it will go to the destination you want. Also, we have the right queue log where you can use custom variables. Um, and also, like the queue continue, you can decide what to do afterwards. So you have a queue that has an overflow queue. You can create, this, um, you can create um, a queue log for that situation where before moving to the overflow queue, you can uh, do something like write a variable, and then send it to a different destination. <clears throat> Again, this is pretty useful for uh, call center situations. And now we're going to talk about ESOL for people who doesn't, is not very familiar with it. Um, this is what the login screen looks like. Uh, it has a dashboard. It lets you configure your network devices. It's a pretty neat GUI. Uh, we are providing GUIP-based firewall rules. Um, that will let you basically block connections from continents or countries. We also have uh, a migration tool that will let you import your configurations from other versions or other solutions, uh, especially for all the Elastic servers. You can just plug in the backup and make it happen. And you can upload it from the GUI directly. You don't have to set up an FTP or SSV. We also have the ping and trace path tools from the GUI, say you have an intermediate user that you don't want to give shell access or for any reason, you can do it from the GUI. Um, also, we included a fail to ban web config. Uh, fail to ban comes with the system. You have to enable it, uh, and you can manage it through the, the web GUI without the need of going uh, on the back. Also, the Let's Encrypt GUI tool that was updated, by the way, uh, that lets you create your certificates and everything from the from the web. We have an open VPN configuration tool where you can work as a server or as a, as a client. Everything is generated from the GUI, certificates, everything. And also we have Isabel Meet that is powered by Jitsi. That it's a free service that you can go to isabel.video right now and you have a um, video conference uh, solution. Uh, sorry, you, you can do video conferencing. You can share your desktop, you have a chat. You have everything. It's a pretty good solution. If you go right now to isabel.video, uh, you just put the conference ID, and it, it runs really, really good. And it's a state of the art. Then I install script. These are the two lines you need to know to install Isabel on any CentOS 7 based server. Um, this will install everything. And finally, uh, we would like to remark that Isabel is open source. All the modules are published on GitHub, and the SRPMs are uh, published on the repositories. If you want to do a pull request, you want to do a modification, you can do it. Uh, we have a pretty active dev team led by Nicolas. Um, that, that it's working always on, on bug fixes and trying to add uh, new more features. Isabel is vendor agnostic. Every hardware vendor can work with us. Uh, anyone can develop any kind of functionality and, or add-ons to be published on the marketplace. 
And uh, basically what we're doing is, uh, our plan is to give continuity to the project, develop more features, get more uh, robust, improve the security, and continue working on this Avel 4 branch. Um, we want to add more vendors uh, to the supported hardware. Uh, we're pretty big on Daddy and OnePipe, but every other vendor is, is welcome. And we also would like to, to get more uh, contributions to the source code. Everything is, uh, is published in, in GitHub. Um, the other idea with Asterisk 13 is to uh, improve compatibility with uh, WebRTC. Um, this has been an ongoing uh, feature. And of course, improving the uh, RESTful app API that will allow more interaction and I mean, it, it, it's a different way of approaching the, the solution. Now you have an API, you, you're not relying on a web GUI. You can do whatever you can imagine with it. Um, also, we're developing a PJZIP configuration GUI. Uh, we don't have it now, even though Asterisk 13 comes with uh, PJZIP and you can create your extensions in the back. Uh, we're working on, on setting up a, a configuration GUI. And also to improve the, the configuration interface. Uh, we, we changed the way that the, the modules were presented and the wrapper now has um, permissions per module. So say before in the past with Elastics or in older versions of Visible, when you were on the PBX um, config module, you had all the options at once and you only could grant permissions for everything or nothing. Uh, now we change the engine so you can grant permissions to your user profiles to specific uh, items. You can do the extensions and queues, but nothing else. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Yes. Uh, there's an add-on marketplace where you can find commercial modules that you can purchase and, pub and developers can publish uh, their modules there. They just need to contact the, the admins. Well, the idea is to incorporate them to future development. We're finishing uh, including Asterisk 13. Uh, actually, it's a, it's, it was a big migration from Asterisk 11 that was what was being used to, to Asterisk 13, but now uh, because of the capability of swapping versions of Asterisk, uh, we are not relying on the Asterisk version of practice, so it's easier to incorporate them. It's on the roadmap. I don't know when, but, but it's on the plan to incorporate the newer versions, especially uh, the newer long-term releases. Sorry? It will depend on your hardware. It's like uh, any regular systems of this. It depends on what we are looking for. Um, so right now, PJZIP is not supported? Yes, it is supported, but you cannot configure it from the GUI. You can create on the files and create the, the extensions there. Is it still Sorry? The Flash Yes. Like to it? Yes, it's an add-on that you can go in the marketplace, click and install, works like a charm. He's the one who ensures the maximum compatibility. No, because there's no configuration on the GUI for those files, so those files won't be overridden until the GUI configuration tool is implemented, but that will be like the other. At this time, no, but when it's enabled from the GUI, it will be like that. Any more questions? All right, thank you so much. Uh, we invite you to come visit us. We'll be in booth 409. And uh, if you go to isabel.org, you will find more information about Isabel and everything we're doing. Thank you very much.